Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in with the formal review for episodes 11 and 12, but mostly episode 12 of Hige Hero. So, great. Anyway, here we are, Hige Hero episode 12. Um, so, well, episode 11, let's talk about episode 11 first. Episode 11 covers Sayu going um, back to her home. Um, and the big significant thing on that one is Sayu um, resolving herself to facing the situation with her friend. I thought this was nice. Although, you know, with episode 11 and episode 12, I do feel like it was a little bit too dramatic on some points. I f like, something about it came off weird. And it, and it wasn't necessarily the part with the mother. The part with the mother, I think, was pretty good. Um, pretty consistent with everything we know. But something about the follow-through and then something about that situation at the rooftop just felt like there was... It just didn't like fully land with me and I think I'd have to go back through the dialogue just to make sure what it is that I found kind of weird. Now I'm not speaking of this like as, as if it's a bad thing. It's more of an issue of it being too much. Like something in that conversation that Sayu had with Yoshida on the rooftop just didn't fully land with me. But I'm having trouble really... It's a, it's a feeling, not really something I can put into words just yet, but I can put many things into words when it comes to that mother. All right. So overall for episode 11, I thought it was a, like a good transition episode. I thought it was good for setting it. Um, I, I think it was good for getting Sayu some closure or getting her the promise of closure. And I think it was worth. Um, and of course, episode 11 ends off with Sayu getting slapped. And we go into episode 12. So when it comes to episode 12, there are a lot of things that I really enjoyed in that conversation. For one, I very much enjoyed how Sayu's mom was deflecting. Like this woman didn't really answer a lot of questions. And when you have that kind of person, like she's not answering Sayu's questions, that makes everything more infuriating and you can really start to root against her. And when you go into the actual conversation itself, you know, this girl just coming in there and complaining about Sayu the entire time, making everything about her. It's insane. Um, it does really make me hate her. But you know, on a writing level, like, I kind of have to wonder. Like, I know a few little details about her, but she is such a caricature for a villain. Like, she is just so bad here. And then, you know, towards the end of the sequence, you have her having this gigantic freak out where she's holding her head like she's having a like some kind of panic attack. And it's like, this is how far you have to go to create this type of situation. And this is, in a way, one of the weaker parts of the whole thing. Like, yes, I very much dislike everything that Sayu's mother is doing. And I dislike how horrible she is. I dislike regret her regretting that Sayu was born. I dislike everything about that. But when you finally see her holding her head and she can't figure out what's going on here, I I one of them, I thought that at some point this lady had realized when she's asking what the hell is this that she's in an anime. Um but looking at it when you it looks like in order to justify such an insane person they had to create a situation where it looks like she's mentally unstable. Because I don't think this works in any other situation. And again, when you see this particular scene, she seems mentally unstable. Um, and this speaks to a bigger thing. I feel like this episode was really dramatic. And they had to do a lot of things to try and get to that level of dramatics. But it feels like they did too much. Like the mom having, when you have the mom potentially having a mental problem, just makes things feel kind of weird. Like after seeing her have that little bit of a breakdown there, I'm not sure if I can hold her to the rigorous standard of someone actually being terrible. Because at that point it becomes, is she terrible because she is naturally a terrible person? Or is she terrible because her brain's doing things that she can't control? Because unfortunately, if you apply the nuance, one of those two situations requires a little bit more thing going in there. I honestly would have rathered it not even give any kind of hint that this girl is mentally unbalanced to this degree. I mean, when you have her freaking out like that, such that the son has to come in there and help, that's pretty aggressive. Um, another thing that I thought was really interesting was when Yoshida 
got on the floor to plead his case to this mother, right? And now mind you, Yoshida has a moment where he almost is gonna like hit this girl with the uh, with the drink he had in his hand. Um, honestly, good on him for holding back. That's the appropriate thing to do. If he hit her, things would have gone bad for him anyway. Like this isn't a situation, these people have money. This isn't a situation where you can just go in there thinking you could hit someone and get away with it. This person could, this woman could probably put Yoshida in jail. She probably has enough money to do that. We don't know what kind of work she does. We don't know why she's so stressed. We don't know what she's lost in the time that Sayu went away. And this is again another problem. It's hard to like really get behind this girl. Um, she's only there to be a villain. But she's not there to be like a villain that really stands to any kind of rigorous test uh, because we just don't know about her. Like when she's talking about the things she's lost, is she actually a business person who has been negatively affected or is she just crazy, right? Ultimately, um, I'm not sure. It doesn't come through all that clearly for me. This episode makes me question things more. But going back to Yoshida, um, he holds himself back, which was good, and he gets on his... He, well, first he has the internal monologue. Um, I felt like the internal monologue was pretty heavy-handed, um, but when he starts talking to the mom, I think that was really worthwhile. Uh, when he gets on the floor, I do have a note here that really, this thing of asking her to raise Sayu really only works because her family is well off. Like, if you had a much grayer situation where the house was like one call to social services away from being condemned or something like that. This conversation doesn't go the same way. The only reason that Yoshida is able to do this is because both the brother and potentially the mother are successful. And I think that is a, a really important nuance to take into consideration here. Had these people been lost causes, this would not have gone down that direction, but because of the environment that they can provide Sayu, right? Um, that's what makes this whole thing work. Like really, this entire plot, I think here at this final, at the final bits of this season or of the series, is where you can see where the cracks in the story are. Just because so many things have to be ramped up in order to make this work, and for some of it, some of, it just doesn't come perfectly together for me. That said. Yoshida, um, if there's one thing that's clear, Yoshida comes out of this looking amazing and Sayu's mom comes out of this looking like a monster. And to continue on with the monster, like this, there was one scene here, right? After Yoshida tells her that he wants her to raise Sayu because that's the responsibility of a parent, um, the first thing the brother says to Sayu afterward is mom says that as long as you don't cause any problems, she won't bother you. So what a wonderful way of saying, I'm not going to raise you. I mean, mind you, later on, it says like she's going to talk to Sayu, but it's like the fact that that's the first thing you say is not a really good sign. I found that very laughable. Now, speaking about laughable, I did think it was extremely melodramatic um, what Yoshida was doing because Yoshida has a line here where he's crying and he's saying like, I got so angry for you. And uh, he was saying, get mad, say something to her. And for that sequence, I was thinking, are you were you blind? She did say something. Mind you, Sayu was angry throughout the majority of that conversation. So let me replay this for you so you know what I'm talking about. So this is one of the things that doesn't hit uh, doesn't hit for me. Um, this dialogue doesn't make sense in the context of the series. Like, you have to kind of, like, look at it kind of loosely to make it make sense. Like, because he could be saying, like, get mad more. But it's just inappropriate. Like, Sayu was already angry. She was re uh, refuting a lot of what her mother was saying. Her mother was deflecting a lot. I don't know how you can be in a situation where when this girl is already in a stress situation, she's already said many things that you want her to say more. As if her anger wasn't enough for you. Uh, but this is the problem with the melodrama. This line is inappropriate. I think it doesn't look good. I think it's only there to paint Yoshida as him being anguished over what happened to the girl. Um, it does, like, I just, I can't take it seriously when 
the majority of the beginning of the episode is Sayu shouting at her mother. Um, so this is the problem with melodrama for sure, because they go so far to try and make the situation heightened, and at the in the process, they end up making some dialogue kind of stupid. Um, but the dialogue works on an emotional level, right? So then when you have, and just to like talk more, when um, when Sayu comes in and she speaks about Yoshida, I was about to get mad too, it's like, Sayu, you were angry the entire time. And it's just like, again, it's how the dialogue comes off and how it kind of twists the situation. I think they went too hard for the melodrama. And honestly, it is kind of weird to see Yoshida cry like this. Like, I found Yoshida much better in the episode where he was uh, telling that one guy to back off and he pushed him out and all that. Like, this one just felt a little bit too much. Um, especially, it's just because of the way that everything else was portrayed beforehand. Again, I don't know how you can... Telling Sayu to get mad when she was mad for the majority of the conversation just, it doesn't land. And it's one of those critical details that is just kind of jarring. But ultimately, for the episode, you know, it ends relatively well. The mother has been moved by Yoshida. She's done with her freak out. She's going to deal with Sayu. Yoshida's going to be going home. We're, we're here at the ending. Um, things are being wrapped up. Um, I, like, honestly, if you look at it, the mother hasn't been fixed. She's made a promise to fix things, but she hasn't been fixed. The problems are still there. Nothing has really fundamentally changed. All that happened is that one guy asked her to do something, and she's having an aneurysm. But given that Higahiro was a short series, this is the, this is about the level of resolution that you could expect for these kind of situations. But overall, um, for me, my final word, I do feel that this final episode, this is the episode where everything has to come together. I do feel that because it's a climax, some things were ratcheted up. Um, some things I think worked really well, like the mother in general being just this caricature, um, just a villainous person, um, just being mentally unhinged. I think that's fair to say. I think that part was valuable. I think Sayu's brother saying like, hey, you know, I kind of failed here. Um, but you know, the guy's a, a, a really important person, right? Like he's a businessman. He's busy at work all the time. You know, I, I'm not going to blame him too much because at least he was helping the situ- At least he was helping Sayu. Sayu did some things, but at least he wasn't as bad as the mother. And at least he did admit fault um, or he owned up to not doing enough for Sayu. Especially when you have a situation where the mom is this bad. But, it, yo, if the mom is mentally ill, then I, this is a tough situation to be in. But um, for him, I think he was respectable all the way throughout. And um, for the negative portion, again, it's just uh, the melodrama at the second half with Yoshida crying. The crying is fine, it's just some parts makes it look like he has short-term memory loss. Overall, we ended on a happy note and I'm excited to see you next week. Guys, let me know what you thought down below. Gonna call it there. Until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.